Welcome to English Christian Church Cross Street, where we're connecting kids with Christ. Hello and welcome everyone to English Christian Church. I'm so glad that you all are joining us today. I'm coming to you live from our uh, honeymoon and on the beach, but we're so glad that you all could join us for a brand new game show today. Off stage, drop the act. When you wear fancy clothes like these, you can act a whole like a whole different person. Like I could be a rock star or a famous actor, and it can be fun to pretend and act like someone you're not. But in real life, you can have integrity, which when you drop the act, you can choose to be the real you. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. You can live the way God wants you to live. And no matter who you're with, no matter where you are. Maybe once in a while You cover up an itty bitty lie with a big fat smile But an itty bitty lie still lie and that's not your style Put stick to the middle of the path from mile to mile Maybe you want it real bad so you'd say okay. Maybe you make the promise but then you break Maybe you didn't learn the words so you fake it And you feel a little low But if instead you move straight ahead Keeping your promises You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side then you're gonna get stuck like a little lie, but it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do, you'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But 
Everybody's gonna catch up Do what you say you gotta do You'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you gotta do You'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else but true to you You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else but true to you True to you Are you always you? Let me try that again. Are you always the same you, no matter who you're with? It's tempting sometimes to wear two different faces in two different places. You're polite to your teacher, but you snap at your mom. Or you answer every question in small group, but you don't speak up when a kid at school is being bullied. Or you're always careful with screen time at home, but at a friend's house, you visit websites your parents haven't okayed. You tell yourself you're not lying. Not really, not with your mouth, but your actions say that you're two different people. Instead, you can choose to be truthful in all you say and do. Treat everyone with respect, not just the people who can help you. Choose to always obey your parents, even if they're not around. And if you love building epic Lego creations at home, don't pretend at school you don't like Legos because it might not be cool. When you choose to be the you that God made you to be, no matter where you are, others can see God at work in you. That's why integrity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hello, planet Earth! It's me, Graham, professional astronaut, broadcasting live from outer space. You know, not a lot of people thought I would make it all the way to Saturn, but you know what? They were right. <laughs> it's just a costume. I'm still, I'm still on Earth. I love to dress up and pretend to be other people. Don't you? I mean, I love to dress up in costumes and wear scary makeup or funny masks. It's out of this world. <laughs> because, I'm an, because I'm an astronaut. Oh, but today we're talking about what it's like to live our lives without masks, without costumes. What it's like to live with integrity. Now, integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's harder than it sounds to live with integrity. There's so many reasons to pretend to be someone you're not. I mean, you may want people to think you're funny. You may want your teachers to think that you're smart. E equals MC squared. The capital of Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. A woodchuck can chuck 32 cords of wood. And you probably want your friends to think that you're cool. Cool kids still dress like this, right? See what I mean? It isn't always easy to just be true to who you are. In today's story, we'll learn about some guys who were under a lot of pressure to be like everybody else. We'll find out if they were able to stay true to who God made them to be. I'll be back in a moonit. <laughs> Instead of a minute, it's moonit. Because I'm in space. <laughs> Maybe I should dress up as the clown again. The Bible 
It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel was only a very young man when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the land of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar made sure that God's people wouldn't rebel by taking Daniel and other young men from royal families in Judah and marching them back to Babylon with him. Will we ever see our home again? Daniel's friends were just as scared and confused as he was. Where will we live? What will he do to us? I sure hope the food is decent. Daniel tried to reassure them as the imposing city gates rose ahead. God will be with us, whatever happens. The king chose the brightest and best young men from Judah and ordered that they receive special training. After three years, you will get to be very important and serve me. The chief official Ashpenaz took charge of Daniel and his friends. <laughs> tut tut, those wishy-washy Hebrew names just won't do. You need new ones. New what? Names. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel, we'll call you Belteshazzar. And you three will be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Are those names or is he just sneezing? You'll learn our language, of course. And all the Babylonian writings? <sighs> Daniel's heart sank as he realized what was happening. The king wanted Daniel and his friends to forget they were God's people. He wanted them to become Babylonians. But Abednego was worried about something else. Hey, I, I'm about to starve. Any way we can get a bite to eat? <laughs> right this way. Ashpenaz led Daniel and his friends to a big table set with mouth-watering foods. Mmm, steak. Or those Babylonian buffalo bites. The cake's got at least nine layers. Only the best straight from the king's table. <sighs> oh, the food smelled delicious. But Daniel pulled his friends aside. Guys, if this food is from the king's table, that means it's been offered to false gods first. Uh-oh, not good. Our new names and training are one thing, but if we eat this food, it's like we're saying we're okay with false gods. But we gotta eat something, man. We can ask for different food, simple stuff that hasn't been offered to the false gods. With that chocolate cake! A bread that go? Okay, okay. Daniel and his friends turned back to Ashpenaz. They tried to ignore the delicious smells <laughs> wafting from the table. Uh, this all looks great, but could we eat something that's not from the king's table? It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The king is my master. He's decided what you must eat and drink. What if you don't eat this and he sees you looking worse than the other young man? He might kill me. No matter what Daniel said, Ashpenaz was too fearful to listen. So Daniel approached the guard assigned to take care of them. Please, just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. See how we look then. Hmm. Well, if Brussels sprouts are your thing. For 10 days, the guards gave Daniel and his friends nothing to eat but veggies and water. I could get into the habit of cabbage. I like broccoli, probably. Pa pass the peas, if you please. I just want a hamburger. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to say no to all those delicious foods the other young men got to eat. But at the end of 10 days, the guard called everybody out. Line them up. He strode past the other young men. Good, good. I can see you've been eating well. When the guard reached Daniel and his friends, he stopped in surprise. What? You've been eating rabbit food? But you look even better fed than the others. <laughs> Daniel smiled. God had helped them grow strong even without eating the food offered to false gods. Okay, fine. You can keep eating veggies and water. 
Rats. Thank you. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding as they studied, and at the end of their training, they were brought before the king. Let's see what you know. How many inches in a meter? 39.3701. Hmm. What do you call a group of porcupines? A uh, prickle. If it takes eight men ten hours to build a wall, how long would it take four men? No time at all, because the wall's already built. Hmm. How are you all so smart? The one true god gives us wisdom. Hmm. Well, we'll see about that. Anyhow, you're ten times smarter than my other advisors. You get to be very important and serve me. Daniel and his friends eventually became the king's most trusted advisors, and even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did. Daniel and his friends were in a tough situation. They were taken into a faraway land with people who tried to teach them all kinds of new and different things. And those things didn't always fit with what they knew was true about God. But Daniel and the others knew something important. They knew what it meant to live with integrity. They knew what it meant to be truthful with your whole life. They could have been tempted to change in order to fit in, but instead they chose to stay true to whatever they knew God wanted them to do. We can look at Daniel and his friends as a great example of what it means to follow God. We can always look at the way Jesus lived. Jesus always showed integrity. He never backed down from saying and doing what he knew was right even though it meant he had to die on a cross for us. So remember, be truthful with your whole life. Choose to follow God with every part of your life, because his way is always worth following. Our memory verse for this month is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9, and it's a great reminder about living with integrity. Let's say it together. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will be caught. Proverbs 10, verse 9. Great job. Every day, we can choose to live truthfully. That might mean not playing certain video games or watching certain movies, even if they look really cool or super popular. It might mean standing up for what's right instead of trying to fit in. Remember, stay true to who you are and stay true to who God wants you to be. Live out what you know is right and you'll never regret it. So what does that look like for you? Well, for me, speaking of integrity, yes, I am on my honeymoon. I am on a beach, but not today. <laughs> I was recording on a screen. So live out for who you are and be truthful for who you really are. And you'll never regret it. Let's pray. Dear God, we know how hard it is to have integrity when we're scared or when we're in stressful situations. So please help us be truthful with our words and our actions in every part of our lives. When things get tough, help us to choose your way, like Daniel and his friends did. We know that following you is the best. We love you, God, and we want to thank you for giving us this day. And we want to follow you always. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining us here at Cross Street today. Can't wait to see you next week. Okay, so Daniel and his friends were in a really bad situation. They were taken from their homes and they were forced to be some king's servant. But even then, they chose to be true to themselves. They chose to live the way God wanted them to live. 
You see that kind of integrity a lot in the Bible. I mean, think of Jesus. He was always true to himself. Jesus could have gone along with the crowd, but instead he lived the way he knew was true, even when it meant giving up his life for you and me. So how can we be true with our lives? Well, it's great if you want people to think that you're fun or funny, but not if it means, say, hurting someone's feelings to get a laugh. I have no idea how to make balloon animals. And being cool is cool, you know? But if you have to pretend to be something that you're not so people think that you're cool, that's not cool. Cool? What's another word for cool? So here's the one thing to remember today. Be truthful with your whole life. You can choose to be who God made you to be. I mean, to be honest and true in what you say and in what you do. Like I said before, it isn't always easy. So ask God for help. That's one small step for you, and one giant leap for integrity. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, I like to go swimming. Uh, my favorite snack is apricots. Uh, I always forget to mail my dad a birthday card. Oh, okay, those are, those are good ones. Um, what's the lie? What's the lie? Swimming! Swimming, you don't really like swimming. Actually, I do. Like, oh, the lie no. was the birthday card. I'm, I'm pretty great about remembering birthdays. Okay. Go. Okay, okay, wow. Okay, it's, uh, that's impressive. Okay, my turn, my turn. I have hair, I wear glasses, I'm immune to gravity. Okay, that's a tough one. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna have to go with the gravity thing. Oh! Yes, how'd you know? I, I don't know. All right, all right, here you go. Here, here you go, okay. I hate pepper jelly. I used to be afraid of chipmunks. I own 42 copies of the book, The Hobbit. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I know this one. I know it's The Hobbit. That's because you only own 39 copies of The Hobbit. Do you count my books? I am the son of an astronaut. I eat chocolate pudding at 3 a.m. And I have 12 toes. Okay. <laughs> The game is two truths and a lie, John, not three lies. Neither of your parents is an astronaut. You wouldn't eat chocolate pudding at three every morning because you always need help opening your pudding cups. And as far as the 12 toes, I think I would have known. You don't know how many toes I have? You don't know! I mean, I'm pretty, no, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you! I'm gonna show them. No, 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 no! Everyone, I'm Brandon and I'm John and welcome to the Sue and Sue Shoe. <laughs> You're so funny. He's so funny. The so and so show, John. <laughs> but he's right. Welcome to our most devoted, loyal, happy audience who always warms our hearts, gives us purpose and makes us feel so cheerful. Wow, you are in a good mood today. I'm always in a good mood, John. Really? <laughs> I'm the peppiest person I know. Oh, you must not know a lot of people. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Any minute now. Any minute now what? Oh, I'm, I'm interviewing later today to be a member of a very prestigious society. Oh. The interviewer should be here. Any minute now. What's the society? Oh, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. <laughs> Oh, you're being sincere. Yeah, of course I'm being sincere. I'm a sincerely, perpetually peppy person. You? I am! Okay. Okay, maybe I'm not always peppy, but anyone who's anyone is a member of the SOS PPP, and I prefer being a perpetually peppy person who's popular. Plus, it looks really good on a resume, so if you'll just 
make me look good in front of the interviewer, I would really appreciate it. Do you think you can do that for me, best friend in the whole world? Um, sure. All right. Hello, peppy people! <laughs> My name is Samantha, and I'm the senior assistant selector for the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. Well, welcome, welcome. Oh, you must be Brendan. Oh, what? No, no, I'm John. Uh, this is Brandon. Yes. Oh, oh. Hi, I'm, I'm the Brandon that you, the person you wanted to see when you, when you, well, I'm, I'm, he's me. <laughs> it is a pleasure, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> sit, 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 yes. sit, sit, sit. I am sitting. No, what no. Oh, oh, hey, hey, sit down. Oh. I mean, would you, uh, here, have a, have a seat. Here. Oh, okay. There oh, you go. Okay. On, the, on the chair that there's, <laughs> Thank I was putting Thank out you. for you. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. So. How are you doing today, Brandon? Splendidly. I'm so good because of, you know, all of the, 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 the birds and the sunshine and the happy, happy thoughts. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, so happy this morning, I barely recognized him. Oh, John. I, I mean, I mean he, you know, I looked at him and I said, whoa, who, who is this? Please stop helping me. I, I really like your club. Yeah. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. We at the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People pride ourselves on our constant cheerfulness, happiness, peppiness, merriment, glee, and bliss. D don't those all mean the same thing? <laughs> Let's get to the interview, shall we? Oh, I love interviews. Actually, it's more of a game. Oh, I love games. <laughs> yeah, me too. Can I play too? Of course, awesome. of course. So I'll hold up a photo, and you say the first thing that pops in your head. Oh, I love saying the first thing that pops into my head. I do it all the time. Uh, uh, door. <laughs> uh, lamp. Uh, uh, giant pencil. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, so photo number one. Uh, Brandon, you go first. Uh, okay, uh, sleep. No, I only say that because sleep is what I want to do when I watch soccer. I mean, it's not a negative thing. Sleep is important for your health. <laughs> okay, um, try to keep your answers to one or two words, okay? Oh, right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. right. Um, John? Uh, fun. Okay. Numero... Dos. Uh, uh, brain freeze. Yummy. Mm. Three. Uh, oh, loud. Uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Ants. Oh, watermelon. Um. Uh, oh, oh, expensive. Party. Um, excuse me. Uh, Brandon, are you okay? Of course. Why? Well, it, it just seems your answers don't seem particularly perpetually peppy. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I think I'm just nervous. I mean, you're the senior assistant selector. If I'd have known they were bringing the SAS of the SOSPPP here, I'd have been more personally prepared to be perpetually peppy. Ah, uh, I see. I see. <laughs> but just so you know, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People isn't for everyone. Some people are only peppy periodically, and that's okay. It is? Certainly! You know, some people only want to join the society because they think it'll make them popular. What? I know, I know, but what really matters is staying true to who you are. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get on with the game, shall we? Oh. All right, I just have one more picture. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's Bible story time with Galen. Hey guys. Hey Galen. Hey Galen. I am very excited for our story today. So let's jump right in. Take it away. Okay. Over 2000 years ago, around 600 BC, there was a kingdom called Babylon, with a king named Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was not exactly a good guy. In fact, he was pretty evil. King Nebuchadnezzar, you know what, that's a really long name, so I'm just going to call him King Nebi. King Nebi and his army surrounded and attacked the city of Jerusalem, and he stole from the temple of God. Then, 
King Nebi gave the order to take some of the Israelites hostage so they could be his personal servants. He wanted only the smartest, strongest, and healthiest to be brought to Babylon as captives to learn his ways and serve him at his palace. One of the men captured was named Daniel. Daniel wasn't exactly a superhero. He was just a person like you and me, but he was put to a big test. As part of their training, the men who were captured were ordered to eat food from the king's table. This food was different than the food they normally ate to honor God. And Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, believed the king's food would make them unclean. So Daniel asked an official for permission to eat something else. But the official was afraid that if Daniel and his friends didn't eat the king's food, they would become weak and unhealthy. But Daniel was determined to stay true to who he was and to honor God no matter what. So he convinced a guard to give him and his friends only vegetables and water for 10 days. And after the 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked stronger and healthier than everyone. After that, Daniel and his friends were allowed to eat the food they wanted. God gave these four men knowledge and understanding. They became some of the wisest men in the kingdom. It may not have been the best circumstance. Daniel and his friends had lost their homes. They'd lost their freedom. But with God's help, they kept their honesty and their integrity, and they stayed true to who God made them to be. The end. What a cool story. Yeah, even with all that pressure to be like everyone else, Daniel chose to be himself. You find a lot of that in the Bible. Look at Jesus. It would have been really easy for Jesus to go along with the crowd. But instead, he only lived the way he knew was true, even if it meant giving his life up for you and me. Incredible. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, see you next time, Kellen. No problem, fellas. Bye. Bye. John, you were right. Whoa. You think I was right about something? <laughs> oh, do, do go on. No, it's about the society of sincerely, perpetually peppy people. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, no, it's not, and I'm okay with that. I mean, it's great to be happy and peppy, but it's also good to have other emotions too. And I'd rather be myself than try to fit into some club. That's awesome. Brandon, I am very proud of you. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I'm practically perpetually proud. Okay. I am positively pleased. Okay, stop. <laughs> Reveal the question. How do you want people to describe you? That's interesting. How do I want people to describe me? What do I want to be known for? I, I, I want to be known as the life of the party. The guy who can, you know, stick out his tongue and touch his nose. And I want people to describe me as someone who's sometimes peppy, sometimes not. And that's okay. <laughs> what about you? How do you, how do you want people to describe you? Hey, look! I did it. I stuck out my tongue and I touched my nose. Yeah, that's very, very that talented. Good? We'll see you next time on the So-and-So Show. Yeah, bye! Please place the pleated pressed pants on the plain pressing plate. A pack of pesky pixies. A pack of pesky pixies. Frothy fructose. Frontogenesis. <laughs> that, Frothy was, that was fructose. September. Mom makes mash m m marmalade. Gum gets gooey. Gum gets gumptious. Gooey, gumptious gum is gargantuanly gooey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>